Well, good afternoon, you guys. It's your boy, Mark. We are out here solo right now, and we're gonna go chase some flathead catfish on this beautiful spring day here in East Tennessee. It is sunny and 65 degrees, one to two mile an hour winds after it was literally 50 mile an hour gusts yesterday. Like, it was awful. I had to rescue some boaters while I was out catching bait. Um, but we're out here on a lake that people don't fish for catfish, fishing for catfish. And um, by myself right now, like I said, we may have a buddy or two showing up later. I don't know yet, they're doing stuff. But either way, we go and fish it. It's the second day of April, I think. Yeah, April, April the second or the first, I don't really know. And during this time of the year, the flatheads move out of their winter haunts, deep water stuff, and they move back into shallow water creeks and feeder systems to feed on shad and uh, get loaded up for the spawn, which will be in a couple months. But we've had some good luck in this creek lately. You saw uh, a little short video Brian and I did out here where I went swimming after a 40 pound blue on a jug. The water temp's still like 50 degrees, so it's daggum cold still. I ain't gonna be doing that today. We just doing rod and reel. But I got a cooler full of 100 skips. 90 now, I guess, I sold a few of them. And all the time in the world to go and catch a catfish. So, we're gonna get back in this creek, about four or five feet of water, throw a couple anchors out, fan cast, and see if we can't pick us up a tub. Stay tuned, you guys. We're gonna have a good evening, I think. Bluebird skies, so not the best fishing conditions in the world, but the water back in this creek is muddy, and that helps a little bit with that. So I think we're gonna catch a couple catfish tonight. I hope we have a good time. Well, I know we're gonna have a good time. I hope we catch a big one. If we don't, whatever. But I'm gonna enjoy my evening out here. I'm gonna let you guys come along with me and enjoy it too. I have made it back in this little creek. It do be really muddy. We had a giant storm roll through last night and that really muddled, muddied this water up even more, which for what I'm doing is good. All these gizzard chatter back in here, I can already see them flipping. It's not even the evening time yet. And uh, the main lake's really, really clear. So whenever you can find a color difference in the water on a really clear lake, usually that's where you're gonna have the best luck is in the stained water on the clear lake. Basically, if you've ever read anything about Buck Perry and what his teachings are on fishing, clear lakes are harder to fish because fish get less active less often on clear lakes as opposed to lakes that have some color to them. And that has to do with light filtration levels from the sun and how that plays a part and when and how they get active. So if you can find a, a, a muddy area or just even a slightly stained area, like milky white's the best watercolor, um, to fish in on a clear lake you'll have more luck than what you'd think and so it, again it's like five feet deep back here maybe less in some areas i'll probably be throwing up in a two or three so what we're going to do is we're going to put uh, two anchors down we have to because there's no current and then we're going to fan cast all the way around the boat to cover this whole big flat right here there's a lot of trees down in the water and these flatheads like to come back in here and feed on all this bait during this time of the year. And it's just going to get better and better as the water temperature warms up. Um, so that's essentially what I'm doing. Throw this anchor out. Already on the bottom because it is no feet deep. I'm gonna let a little line out. That's probably good right there. Trying to get the catch there. Caught on something down there, a tree or something. If I gotta swim down after it, I will, but I hope not. Now we got that. 
And then we're gonna come back here on the old center block. And throw her at. We've nicknamed that one Little Bertha because it's small, not too big. Big Bertha was like 50 pounds, that was awful. Got that guy out, and then I'm actually gonna tighten this one up right here because a big fish is gonna spin us around if we're not tight. Gotta wait for that back one to come taut. That's good enough. Not gotta be perfect. Probably get spun around anyways because this boat's pretty small. There's a park up there. Brian and I were bank fishing right there last time. We threw that jug out here. And this is where I went swimming at. So I'm just gonna anchor right here and then literally we're gonna cast everywhere around the boat. Show you what we're using for rods. You guys like to see that. We got my favorite setup right here. It's a big cat fever. Hellcat rod, this is a medium heavy. We got a 470 size Okuma Komodo with 65 pound test braided line. This is just rigged up Carolina rig style, very simple. Big barrel swivel. This one's got a double hook rig and I use a 100 pound mono leader on my catfish rigs because they don't care at all. And I'd rather be over gun than under gun with these guys, especially if you gotta rip, rip them up out of some heavy cover. And then back in here, we're gonna use as light of weight as possible. Uh, that I can throw the furthest. So one to two ounces on some, two to three on others, just something like that. Doesn't really matter. You don't have to have these guys back in here because there's literally no current, just something you can throw really far. And uh, that's basically all there is to it. Um, again, a lot of the times we're fishing out the back because there's current and we want our baits right in front of the structure we're fishing at the back of the boat. But here there's no current. So I'm literally just gonna fan cast all the way around the boat and having these rod holders all over the place allows me to be able to do that because then I can fish everything now. So that's basically the game plan here. I've lost my bait knife, so we're gonna have to use my Swiss knockoff Ozark Trail Swiss Army knife to cut bait, which is not the greatest, but it'll do. We're fishing, that's all that matters. And this bait's already active back in here. That's a pretty good sign, I think. Last two times we've been back in here, whenever the bait starts flipping and going nuts, that's when we start getting the catfish bite. So that's what I'm gonna try to do today. I mean, there's some big fish back in here, but oddly enough, a lot of them have been eating smaller little chunks. And that could just be because the water's shallow and they're just not, you don't need a big bait for them to have be able to find it because it's so shallow they can pick up on it better but we got different sizes of skips this is a big guy right here that's about a two pounder we caught a couple over three yesterday and then we got our medium sized guys right here and i mean in the past you guys have seen me use these things whole um for cats i may throw out a big rig tonight but like back in here i mean chunks have been working in little heads so i don't know i'll throw a little bit of everything Tonight will be the night that the big one eats a, a giant bait. So, we'll see. All right, let's cut some bait. These are fresh skips. So you got that nice blood coming out of them. That's what you want. The fresher, the better. Vacuum sealed works well, but if you can get them fresh, I always tell people to try to do that if you can the night before or the day of while you're fishing because it, it massively increases your odds of catching a, a big old fish fresh is best but you also never know unless you throw we got some big 10 knot hooks on this guy right here a big 10 otter take a four ounce weight Get that guy on there. I'm gonna start out with a head. Getting some head on the head. Take that up through the bottom 
lip right there through one of the nostrils and you'll be good to go i was going to take this big cooler out until i had 400 pounds of ice and skipjack in it and i was like yep that ain't happening so we're going to launch it way up that way You can see that gizzard shad flipped right there where, where I threw it. So, there be bait all over the place up in here. That guy's out. Give it a little slack. Let him eat it. This dude, just old four ouncer on there. Like four to six is like at least on these rods the magic weight with a bait to uh, throw it the furthest. That's different on every rod, reel, and line, and all the other stuff. There's lots of variables that go in there. Man, look at all the bait, y'all. I mean, there's the gizzard chat everywhere. Should have brought a cast net to uh, make sure there's not a scale on this. Catch some live and throw a live one out, but somebody stole the poop bucket at Smoky Mountain Brewery after Brian and I were fishing the other day. I bought a new bucket, but I am without a cast net still until I buy a new one, which I just haven't done yet. There's that one. That one's way up there. Put this guy down in here. There we go. We got our two out the front. I may take a couple of them rod holders and put them in these things right here so I can fish right there too. But I don't know. Yeah, that's a nice gory chunk right there. We're going to put this one like right up next to those trees because I'm betting we'll pull one out of those trees I mean that's like a two feet of water right there rocking with decently tight drag too because <laughs> Need to be able to pull these guys up out of the stuff as quickly as we can because it's shallow very very shallow Junk. Should have brought a book to read. It's so nice out here. Put that guy right there. Ugh. All right, I'm going to get the rest of these out. And then we'll be back once we get a little a nibble or a takedown, hopefully. That's what we want, big old takedown. Throw a little snack in the water for him. I'm hoping one of these on the front gets hit and it pulls the whole front end of the boat around. Put the old Mountain Dew in with the skippies. No yeller, I guess, same thing. Got us a nice little spread now. All the bait fish are licking everywhere and we're just waiting on the big bite brought me a chair today too feeling a little bougie especially after yesterday about threw my dang back out going through four foot waves in this little little boat it was pretty pretty rough felt like an 80 year old getting out of bed this morning 
I'm gonna kick my feet back. See what happens. That right there had the first bite of the day. Looks like a little pecknet. There are some gar and turtles back here in Channel Cats, but there also are flatheads because this is Flathead Creek. Here. Oh, we put it down. That was a slow, nice takedown. Dang it. I thought that was about to be something. Lordy. He just put it down. I don't think he's still on it. Ooh, that looks good. Good sign though, that was way back there shallower. We got here, guys. We got here. He's swimming with it. He's swimming with it. I'm gonna have to reel down. I'm gonna have my GoPro on. Oh, we put it down. No, he's still there. All right, I'm gonna have to reel down this fish real quick. All right, guys. I think we got the first fish of the day here on. Pull my chair out of the way. Been kind of pecking at it. We're gonna reel down on him and see if he's there. Oh yeah, there he is. There he is. There he is. He came at us a little bit. Oh, it's kind of feeling like a flathead. Especially the way it bit too. He ain't a big guy, but I think he's a flathead. Let's see. Yeah, a little flathead, little flathead. Flathead Creek, baby. Oh, yeah. Little flathead. Okay, that's the first flathead of the evening, though. It ain't even dusk yet. That's usually one. Flatheads are normally more active at night and in the evening. Yeah, this guy in the middle of the day. Look at that guy. Here's the baby eight. Little chunk piece. Turn this camera around because I'm sure that lighting is awful. Let's see what we got here. Pretty little flathead. Flatheads are my favorite, for sure. The colors on that guy. Pretty cool looking dude. See that turn? There we go. He just blends right into that water. I think another one got hit. Yeah, right there. Oh, he came up to the surface. That's got a fish on. All right, we gotta let this go. That fish came up to the surface. Oh yeah. Every time I don't have my dang GoPro on, this is what happens. Oh, he's coming up to the surface back there. Double. Oh, you see him jumping back there? That fish was jumping. That's how shallow it is, y'all. It is no feet of water. I mean, back over there, it's like a foot. This is a decent cat, y'all. Oh, oh, he pulled some drag. I have some drag, and this drag ain't loose. This is gonna be a netter, I think. Oh, boy. Coming at me now. Gotta make sure he didn't get an anchor rope. He is steaming ahead at us. What we got? The 
It's a blue. It's a blue back here. Oh man. Oh, he's pulling line. Hey. Making a show back here. Heck, that might be a 25 pound blue. I'm gonna net this guy. Oh, that one's getting hit. We may have a triple. He does not want to go in the net, y'all. Back there got hit. I don't know if y'all can see it from that angle. Okay. I'm gonna just fish grip this guy. He's digging. Oh. He digging. There we go. Hard fighting blue. Hard fighting blue. This is some shoddy camera work, y'all, but that's just how it be. This one ate a head bait. And we almost had a triple. Got him. Oh yeah, he's a 30 pounder. For sure. Take a look at this guys. He's a big one. Very nice. A little solo fishing out here. A little solo action. The right rod and the rod rack right there was getting hit. So I'm gonna have you guys watch it while I'm doing this. chair out of the way a little bit let's see yeah you can kind of see it from there we're gonna work on getting this fish unhooked and getting a bait back out in the water that fish that is a, a good looking fish here a nice blue cat awesome awesome catch and he hit it when he hit it he came out of the water like a sh black tip shark is wild i don't know if that camera caught that but that's what it did good lordy look at that okay let's let's release him. oh he's biting my finger so bad Won't let my thumb out. Mm. Do a little release video here of the mini toad. I'd sure like to watch a big flathead do what this one did. Oh. I thought he was going to tear my thumb up. There he goes. See you later. Very nice. All right. We on the board with a nice double, almost a triple. Let's see if we can't get another one or two. A big flat. We want a big flathead tonight. Big one. Guys, I think we got another flathead on this rod right here. I just released that blue about two minutes ago. Got the other rods back out. And now this one's getting hit. 
that left one you see how it's just like a slow type thing a lot of times that's a flathead bite that's what that first flathead did i'm gonna reel down on him it's either that or like a turtle or something hard to tell he's been doing it for a little bit though I don't know. No, he's off of it. Whatever it was. It was tiny. Whatever it was, it was very small. Yeah, look at that. Right there. Chewing it to pieces. Put a fresh one on. Getting a lot of action from the extra shallow. So we're going to throw this guy out. We're gonna zing him really far back there too. That reel's got seasoning. You can tell it's been used for years. Probably almost a decade. That's why I like these Okuma Komodos. They just last for freaking forever. So I buy it and keep it for a decade. Listen to those birds. Be picture perfect without that plane sound. But I'll take the birds. This one right here just got hit. Looks like a little gar or something, but it was a hit. Everything's well. No, we caught that flyhead out towards a little bit deeper water, probably seven feet. So maybe they're just now moving back in here for the evening. We'll see. Here y'all, can we put it down? What the heck? No, he's still on there. He's still on there. That fish is on that bait. I think it hit it and set the hook. Before I turn the camera on, before I can turn around. I bet we got another flathead here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. Hooked up. Oh, I gotta get him out of that tree. Oh, you hear that? You hear him trying to go in it right there? Oh, he's trying to go in it. Get out of there. Oh, did you see him come up back there, guys? I pulled him out of that tree. Man, that glare is bad, y'all. I'm sorry. Okay, he's trying to get an anchor up now. I think it's a decent fish, y'all. Oh. 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 Flathead. Flathead, baby. We got his flathead. Oh yeah. Flathead number two of the evening. Flathead number two. Here we go, baby. Look at that. Woo! Oh, get back up here, boy. Get on up here. Swallowed that hook. Very rare to happen on circle hooks, but it will happen sometimes. He fought. I should be able to get that out. Oh! There we go. Nice flathead. We may be able to have, about to have another double, y'all. Looks like we got a flathead in the floor. I think something's swimming with this bait. This one right here. Looks like that weight was. Across the bottom. I tightened down on it. That flathead just tore me up. I'm hooking it, but I got him undone. I think you put it down. 
put it down. He definitely picked, because I cast it over that way. He picked it up and carried it back this way. That boat's kind of swaying right now. That's why you're seeing that line go taut and stuff. You can tell that when it's a fish, though. It's like that, or folded. Now that is just a good-looking flathead. Dick. Here we go, you guys. There's that flathead. Beautiful fish. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Oh yeah. Let's see if we can't release him. That's what you gotta do with these big fellas. You gotta let them go. He gone, he gone. Okay, now we need one double that size. My buddy Nick's about to show up. I think we may take it to the bank, start us a little fire and we'll let the sun set come down and see if we can catch us a big one from the bank. Big chilling mode engaged. All right, my buddy Nick just showed up. So I'm gonna reel in, go pick him up. And I think we're gonna go pull it over to the bank and chill out and start us a little fire over there. Too nice and even not to enjoy it. And I think we can pull a supply head off the bank. I'm thinking so. We'll just throw it really far. All right, let's go get it. Right up yonder here on the bank. I have that sun out of my eyes. They kill me the whole time. Kind of making the fish not look great in the camera either. It's blowing them out. Do 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 What's up, buddy? You ready to catch a flathead? Some poopy looking water. Oh, there's a tree. Hop on in, buddy. All right, let's see where this tree's at. Maybe I hit. I don't know what I hit. Maybe I hit a cart. Huh? Yeah. There's a million of them back here. Really? And there's like five billion gizzard shad, literally. They'll start flipping all over the place. In a second. We don't have the Asia variety of cart back here yet, thank God. No? No. Back home, we had some big ass carp. Remember those pictures of us bow fishing them? Uh huh. Because they're not meant to be in Lake Champlain. And shoot them. About two weeks out of the year, they would flood up and spawn at night. Thunk! And dude, you'd pull out. I mean, my buddy shot a 40 pound carp. I mean, that's a blast. And on, a, on a bow, it's like. Uh. It's like you have finger drags and shit. So it's like. <laughs> it's like nothing, no drag. And it would just be like a loose reel. Yeah. And like really touchy. Ah, there goes all your skin on your thumb. Well, speaking of skin on my thumb, I had a chunk taken out earlier. God damn. Yeah. Dude, you're not back here. Is it public or private? Public. That's pretty sweet. I got some boots on. Okay. I'll come up there. Yeah, see, look, our fire was right there, uh -huh. and that was like five feet off the water where wow. we had it. Yeah. Try staying in the back real quick. Okay. I don't know that my boots are this deep. I didn't want. I didn't wear the super deep ones. 
I'm on my tippy toes. I don't want wet feet. Trim that motor up. Where's the trim again? Uh, on the side there. Yeah, you're right down from it. Right Hit the up button. Yeah. Keep going. All right, that's good. It was just sticking. All right, I guess you can come and hop out now and then we'll pull it forward even more. Probably could have told you to wear boots, but. All right, good enough. She's stuck. She won't go nowhere. It'll be really bad if they drop the water. I don't think they will though. If they, oh, if they turn on the water? Or they drop it. Oh, yeah. That would suck so bad. Yeah. They, we've seen them like floating down the turkeys, uh, the clinch. Yeah, when we're trout fishing, they'll just be up in the trees, like gobbling at you. Oh yeah, I heard them gobble today. All right, all right, guys. So we're just gonna launch it as far as we can back out that way. I believe I got it out there. That's pretty far. We're gonna have to find some bank rod holders now since ours are now in the water that we made last time but we'll throw a couple out right here throw us a few out we got these guys off the back of the boat now we're putting a couple out down the bank down this way those two flatheads i caught earlier from the boat were from this side so we're gonna put a few over here on the bank clicker Water's come up, so whether that's good or bad for this spot, I don't know. We'll find out though. Get us a nice size chunk here, because that's what both the flatheads have been eating. going with the janky rod holders. Hey, it'll work. All right, let's see how far I can get this one out. Probably a little further if I start my reels. Pretty good throw. Pretty good throw. We always seem to catch it. Yep. So you have to, you kind of have to jank something. Oh, you don't. That's really it. janky. No, nah, just let's see what happens. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Yeah. Every fish in his last words. Yeah, it'll be fine. Got the last one. I'm gonna throw this one up that way. It's kind of in the corner. It did? Yeah. That was a fish then. I mean, there ain't no current, there's no wind. Gosh, this looks like we're gonna get snag city over here. I didn't throw that one out there as far as I could. I just went one a little bit closer. Those flatheads will come up to the bank here and beat on the chads and the bluegills. Okay, we're in business. We got them all out. Let's make us a little fire now. We're getting us a little candle in and this, this little pine needle is working. Absolutely great for that. That'll light right up. Now we can just get some little twigs. Put them suckers on there. Get us a good pile of them. Yeah. This stuff will burn really, really easily. That's yeah, so dry.
You right first, my man, if we get one to right. take off. Sweet. You may catch more fish from the boat out there, but it's way more of a vibe being here from the bank yeah. with a fire. Get that sucker going. I'm gonna be hungry by the time we leave. I haven't eaten, I ate some beef jerky today and a protein bar and a kiwi. What? I've had my calories for the day. Kiwis are underrated though. Elite tier. Yeah. This is the dry piece of wood you could want. Let's see if it should start going here. Yeah, I should have got that cigar I have in my truck. Yeah. I feel like that would be the vibe right now. Yep. She going now. Oh, yeah. All right, yep. Come over to it. Oh, we put it down. Son of a gun. That was a flathead bite. Did you see how steady it was? Yeah. That's what they do. Surprised he put it down though. Huh. We got our fire going. We had the first bite over here. Yeti bucket, also a seat. Of that seat. We have a decent fire going. So we had that one bite down there, and then we had one bite on the boat too. Nothing's gotten slammed yet. I'm hoping for just something to get slammed and we don't have to worry about it or just one of those four go off. We'll try to get Nick's first flathead here from the bank. Oh yeah. Welcome to Camp Flathead. I think he's got one on this. Yeah, reel down on that. Keep going. Put your hand up top. Put your hand up top. Yep. Real, real, real. Go, go, go. Quick, quick, quick. Keep it in the holder. You got him? Got him. Oh, all right. Get it out of there. Get it out of there. Good one. Is he coming at you or did he come off? No, he's on. Okay. Oh, what we got? All right. Be easy with him. We don't rip that hook out. I wonder how long he's been hooked there. What's he feel like? Maybe a 25, 30. Some weight on it when he came down? Yeah. He's swimming at us now. Yeah. There you go. Blue, I think. Oh, good blue, dude. Good blue. Holy crap. All right. Uh, Daggum, bro. That's a big blue. Uh, walk walk him. To the shore? Yeah, take him up under those rods. Can you, here, let me help you. Let me help you. I'm going to grab Whoa, this. He's pulling hard now. Go up under. Yep. We're doing the rod shuffle. We got fire on the bank, boys. Right. We got us a big blue coming up on the bank. What a vibe. I saw that rod fold down by the flicker of the firelight, and I was like, oh, gosh. Pull him up on the bank. Heck yeah, that's a toad, bro. That's a good one. That's, that's pushing 40. 
Heck yeah. This is the dude whose second catfish was an 82 pounder, so he's good luck. Oh yeah, guys, a good one. Yes, sir. Oh, twice. That big 10 on, got him. That's about a 40 pound fish, bro. There we go. Look at that, guys. Big old blue cat from the bank. Alrighty, guys. Here's about a 40 pound flathead right there. Not flathead, a blue. I'm confused because this is supposed to be Flathead Creek, but we've got two blues today and two flatheads. That's a good one, bro. Daggum good one from the bank. Heck yeah. All right, let's release them. He's mean. You can grab his tail and get his head down in the water and he'll... Oh yeah, you got shoes on. I forgot about that. Should be able to push him off there. Oh, he's ready to go. He's too fat. Oh, there he goes. Oh, there he goes. I'm too fat for this. Get me out of here. Slowly jump. Solid fish, bro. Yes, sir. Heck yeah. Flathead camp. But that was a blue cat. And we're okay with that. He is storing.